Hi, boys and girls. This is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. Thank you for joining me for part two of my Red Raven review. And we're really going to be looking at some interesting features of the camera, as well as going through the post-processing of an image. Let's begin by looking at the high dynamic range capabilities of the Red Raven. The camera is able to capture six extra stops of dynamic range, which is insane because the sensor is already amazing. What the camera is doing is capturing two identical frames of the image at the same time. One is exposed properly and then one is underexposed in order to preserve the highlights and give you the opportunity to blend those frames together in post. You do need to keep your storage in mind though when you are recording because you're essentially recording double the footage. So once you set it in the camera to shoot HDRX and dial in how many stops of dynamic range you want to capture, when you load that clip into Red Cine X, you will see that there is an HDRX setting available for you. From here, you can start blending the two frames together, but I suggest actually going into each frame, the A frame and the X frame, which is the underexposed frame, and exposing exactly how you want those frames to look, and then use either the simple blending mode or the magic motion mode. Magic motion, I think, works just slightly better, maybe because there's magic in it. In actuality, magic motion adds a little more sharpness to one of the frames so that if you have motion in your image, it looks realistic. I decided to use HDRX to film this scene because the room I was filming in was extremely dark and outside it was a bright sunny day and I really wanted to capture a little bit of the foliage outside the window. Anyone who's shot a scene like this before knows that with most cameras, once you pull up the exposure in the room to make it a lot brighter, you're going to end up just overexposing the information out the window. But with the Red Raven and using HDRX, I was able to at least capture some of the foliage. And you can see in my X frame, my underexposed frame, I do have a lot of that information there. I think in hindsight, I didn't do the best job blending these two frames together. But I think part of it was the room was just so dark that once I pulled up that information, I had to let some of the info out the window go. As with high dynamic range photography, you can really make this footage look as extreme as you want. I was more so going for something a little more subtle. When you're done, you export the final version so that you're binding those two A and X frames together to edit in another program, or you can export it to a file that will allow you to continue to manipulate it in a program that does that sort of thing with HDR footage. The Red Raven camera has a time-lapse mode, which is a really great feature to have built into a camera. Like any time-lapse, you set the number of frames you want to take and then how often you want to take them. I noticed that with the frame rate I chose and the intervals I decided on, I was kind of limited as far as how slow a shutter speed I could shoot with. In a perfect world, I would have selected a slower shutter speed because I don't like having any fast, jittery movement in my time-lapses. But the feature is there, and depending on the settings you choose, you could end up with some really cool footage. And the nice thing is, the whole 4.5K video file is bundled together so you don't have to go through individual frames like a typical time-lapse shot with a DSLR. I would say one of the most important things when shooting with this camera, or any high-resolution camera, is to make sure the picture is in focus. And so here's a couple settings that I set to make sure that I'm always capturing things in focus. The first is I have a toggle switch on the side of my camera that adds kind of a layer of sharpness to the LCD and that way I can tell when things are in focus a little bit more clearly. If you just leave it the way it's set when you get the camera, when you go to punch in it'll go directly to the center of the frame and you can't move it around or do anything. If you go to focus and then focus confirm and you turn that on, what it'll do is it'll give you this little box on the screen and then you can move that little box anywhere in the shot and then when you punch in, you punch into that part of the image. I don't pay any attention to the color of the box. The outline of it does change if the camera thinks that the shot is out of focus. I find that it's not correct, at least not with the lenses that I use. 
So that's how I focus with the Red Raven camera. But I know some of you will want to know the autofocus features, so let's look at those. Single point autofocus allows you to pick a point on the monitor and the camera will refocus on that point. So here's a perfect example of what not to do. I'm shooting super shallow. I'm shooting uh, in a low contrast for the most part situation that's overly bright. And if you read their manual, they'll say, you know, overly bright, uh, no contrast, um, backlit kind of shots are going to be the worst for using their focus system. When I punch in, I can see, yeah, it is actually getting focus. It's having a harder time focusing on the camera in the back because uh, the area around the lens doesn't have a lot of contrast. There is a touch track option. I haven't really used it. It allows you to basically track someone as they walk through the frame. And then there's continuous autofocus. What I do love about having the ability to do autofocus is to be able to use apps like Full Control, which I showed you in part one. Full Control is such a great app and the ability to use it as your actual wireless follow focus is pretty amazing. You can actually set hard stops on the follow focus that you rack between and you can actually use the rack function that the Red Raven has, where you can set multiple points on the monitor and have it rack focus between those objects. I've got my iPhone right next to the monitor and you can see focused on these C stands that I'm able to pull focus from my iPhone. So when you're thinking about buying or renting lenses and you're thinking of just going with cinema lenses that are fully manual, keep in mind you won't be able to use features like this. One of the major design features that RED added when they were building their DSMC2 cameras was to add two reference mics to the very front of the camera and you can see them in this shot just below the lens mount. Now most people are going to run dual system sound whether they're working on a crew or if they're using a zoom recorder like I have in the past and then syncing in post. One of the new options that I ran into was this little tiny audio device from Beach Tech that gives me an XLR and a balanced 3.5 millimeter jack so I can run a shotgun mic and my Sennheiser wireless lav and then directly plug the mixer into the RED camera so that I don't have to sync in post. You can also do this with the zoom and have multiple XLRs, but it's really nice, this little beach tech device, because you can mount it to the top of the camera, you can mount it to the side of the camera, you can mount it to the bottom of the camera very easily. If I'm using the mics for syncing sound, I have the gain turned way up because they're very quiet, but good enough to sync sound with. And I have them turned down if I'm using a recorder. Check out this footage where I was recording the piano playing using just internal mics. Let's talk about the color science and kind of the post-production workflow and how this camera works. The Red Raven records ProRes and DNX HD at 2K directly to the Red Mag as you're recording your 4K file so that you can use them as dailies or use them to edit and then relink to the R3D files later. The Red Raven can capture raw R3D files that can be natively edited in Final Cut Pro and Premiere, which is what I do. I don't transcode anything. So I've got a copy of Red Cine X open here, which is the free software you can download from Red. The Red cameras are always recording raw, but unlike the Blackmagic cameras, 
that record raw and then when you uh, load them into software you see them as raw the red camera allows you to record raw and in camera see it as red dragon 2 or in red cine x see it as red dragon 2. so you're always messing with the raw and any changes you make on top of it are 100 percent non-destructive the only things that are really set when you're recording the camera are the aperture you used and the shutter speed so rather than just jumping between ISO 800 and 640, you can choose ISO 800 and then use flood control to just dial in a small ISO change. And that's really one of the things that I think makes the image look the best when you're using this version of Red Cine. So you can go back in post and pick your white balance uh, if that is appropriate, which it isn't in this shot. And you can add tint and of course, it's always best in my mind to set your white balance when you're shooting so that you know what you're looking at and you have a reference point and that's easy to do. Uh, letting the camera set it automatically as you can see here. If you're looking for a less contrasted look to the footage, you can always pull up the shadows and have more of that milky overexposed look that of course wouldn't work for the shot that I've got here. Red cameras don't sharpen the image in camera so if you want to add sharpness to the image a point or so uh, you would add the unsharpened mask in your export settings or you could add sharpness in your nonlinear editor. So you can export your files from Red Cine and have all those changes baked in and have transcoded files or you can just hit save and all that information will be saved along the raw files so that when you open those files in Final Cut Pro or Premiere all those changes are already there which is brilliant. You can also make a smaller version of those changes in Final Cut or Premiere in their red panels and of course you can add lots either to the log raw version of the, of the file or to the Red Dragon version of the file. In spring 2017, RED has announced a new image processing pipeline called IPP2. They did this because they had to create a new color science for their helium sensors. And so instead of just doing that, they went back and they thought, what could we do to make the image processing from the raw file all the way to the finished and even better? So IPP2 is for in-camera recording on the helium sensor cameras, but any footage shot on any RED camera from RED1 all the way to the new sensors can use IPP2 in post-processing. So let me show you that. It's very exciting. What I have here is a beta version of Red Cine X, this is one that is running IPP2. You'll notice the panel on the right is a lot more simplified and I no longer have an opportunity to change my color space or gamma curve. It is now set to red wide gamut RGB and exposure adjustment is your new flut control. It actually mixes it all into one and then you can change your shadow detail and your contrast by using the new output transform panel. So I want to show you screenshots of the difference between the image processing pipeline one, which is how I recorded the footage with my camera and bringing that same footage into IPP2. No, I have made zero changes in Red Cine X to this footage, zero. This is just what the improvements of IPP2 did to my footage. I'm pretty sure I shot this on the Takina 11 to 16, gain not the sharpest lens in the world. When we look at that same shot in IPP2, look at the details of the plants. They're not just sharper, they're way more detailed. And the shadows of the trees, there's way more dynamic range. It looks like I was using a different lens to capture it. And of course, the color is even improved. I'm just blown away by the new image processing pipeline. The Red Raven is the best camera I've ever used. I'm very familiar with Red's previous line of cameras and I have yet to use their helium sensor cameras. But as far as a camera goes, this is not the kind of camera where in my mind, I want something more. This is just a classically 
excellent camera. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of this review. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe, please. Keep your eyes locked on my Nice Lady Productions Instagram feed because I'm always showing small videos, reviewing other pieces of gear. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I love reading them. And take care of yourself.